Hello and welcome to the another episode of Digital Transformation Dialogues by Daso Systems in association with Economic Times. Indian two-wheeler segment is being challenged on multiple fronts, be it the slowdown in entry-level two-wheelers or disruption caused by the electric vehicle startups. While there are large-scale OEMs who have strong foothold on supply chain and distribution, EV startups are no less. They are changing the things the way they are done in this segment. The Indian two-wheeler segment is changing forever now. To understand how the electric two-wheeler startups are working, we are at River EV headquarters in Whitefield, Bangalore. To talk to Mr. Aravind Mani, who is the CEO and co-founder, and who will take us to the journey of how the company has built the product from scratch in just 21 months. Welcome, welcome to the Thank you so much for giving your time. No problem. Thanks. Very exciting times for electric two-wheeler segment. Uh, you recently launched uh, your premium electric scooter named as Indy. W what is the target segment you are planning and how do you see your growth from you know, after you begin your deliveries in August? Sure. So we are uh, attempting to create a segment called the utility lifestyle segment in two wheelers, in specifically in scooters with the Indy. So we're targeting the solo entrepreneurs uh, who are uh, uh, doing their own thing. So the large broad market is um, someone who is young, 18 to 28, someone who's got their own trade, someone who has a need to carry things on their two wheeler in addition to using it as a mode of vehicle of commute from point A to point B. So that is the, the kind of the, the home chefs, the, the, the home, uh, the gardeners, the shop owners, these are the kind of uh, target market that we go after. Okay. And how do you see the market going for this particular segment that you have created or you plan to create? Uh, you know, what, how, much, how many units you want to sell or manufacture in order to you know, get the ball rolling for River EV? So the, the market is huge because more than 50% of India is self-employed. Like we have, we have a lot of young people. As a nation, uh, all of them are not going for a white collar or a blue collar job once they are 18, right? So the market for self-employed people is huge. Uh, and today, most of them uh, are commuting on a two-wheeler. Right. They're using the existing two-wheelers in whatever form factors available to, to cater to their needs. Right. We are trying, we have come up with a form factor that will help them do their work in a far better fashion compared to anything available in the market today. So that is the whole uh, value proposition that the River Indy brings. Uh, talking about production plans, what we want to uh, do is uh, to start selling uh, in the month of August this year. And uh, we plan to be in around uh, three to five cities in 2023. Uh, by 2025, we want to uh, reach a sale of uh, one lakh units per annum. Got it, got it. Uh, one lakh unit is a big number to talk about. Also, I want to understand, you know, before you thought of, you know, that special segment that you have you plan to create. Uh, did you did any mapping, you know, how many, what is the size of this particular uh, segment or the size of this particular solopreneurs you have talked to? Yeah, so I told you about the large number, right, more than 50% of India is solo entrepreneur. Now, between 18 and 28, approximately India sells close to 6 million units of scooters. Uh, I think we will attract a lot of buyers from the 125cc petrol scooter segment. And uh, we'll also adapt, uh, adopt them and attract a set of uh, buyers from the motorcycle segment because of the large wheels that we have. We are the only EV with 14 inch wheels in the market today. Since you talked about few features, I would like to understand what is the USP of River EV Indy electric premium scooter? Sure. And why are you calling it as SUV or scooters? So there are several uh, features that Indy has which is not there in the market, in any scooter out there in the market, leave alone electric, whether it's IC engine or, so there are several features with the Indies which is very unique to Indy. So why do we call it SUV scooters? Because of multiple reasons, starting with the 14 inch wheels. Uh, we are the only EV in the market today with 14 inch wheels that gives better rideability and maneuverability on all road conditions, very good ground clearance. Same uh, thing with, uh, with respect to storage, uh, we offer 55 liters of lockable storage between the front box around 12 liters and under the seat 43 liters, which are both segment leading. And this is the largest storage available in any two-wheeler being sold in India today. 
Same thing with uh, respect to several other features, like there are uh, uh, safeguards in the front which will protect against a fall. The entire build is very, very rugged. There are also pannier stays featuring for the first time in a scooter, which will help you accessorize the product, completely change the form factor of the vehicle um, during the work day. So there are multiple accessories that you can buy along with Indy, which will help you do your task in a much better fashion. So it is actually very appealing in look in terms of sporty, very utilitarian in design, and uh, rightfully called the SUV of scooters. I've got to know that you have been like working very hard and you know you have brought this product in just 21 months and I think that's the fastest product development that has happened in the Indian EV ecosystem. Uh, what are your views on that and how did you manage to do that? So uh, there are, uh, so it's very important right, for example as a startup you really have to have some really core skill sets, core strengths as a startup because you are, you are up against large companies in the industry. So for us, one of the core strengths that we have is the design and technology skill set. That's number one. Number two, we are also very agile as a team. We, are, we run a very, very small, uh, highly efficient uh, team uh, that is able to actually pull this off in this time. So starting the development, we are very clear what we are developing and what is the process that we have to take to get there. So it's a very simple design and technology development process that we followed that spanned over uh, two years, now we have over 50 vehicles being tested on Bangalore roads. Those are all pre-production and batch vehicles. And uh, we also have the support from all the uh, amazing supply chain partners who are the large tier one companies in India. Uh, so that is again very, very important. Okay. Now stepping back, you know, we have talked about the market, the, you know, the customer segments and everything. Stepping back, you know, for any startup, you know, it's really important to, you know, faster executing things because you know, there are legacy companies who, who have strong foothold on, you know, supply chain, distribution, and, you know, they are already rolling out products for many years, and sure. it's very easy for them to, you know, just roll out one product and get it distributed pan India. Uh, what is the approach that River EV is following, you know, and how are you managing the overall cost and the efficiency within the company? Sure. So, uh, I think um, profitability and cost impact has to be uh, very strong focus. So today, when during the product development, our large focus was design and tech, right? Now, we run a R&D team of around 250 people that does industrial design of the vehicle. The vehicle is completely designed and conceived in the R&D in the building that you're sitting here. So then the mechanical structure, the battery pack design, the electronics design, the electrical design, everything is completely done in house. So we are very uh, efficient in the way we operate things, but that's one strength that we have. I spoke to you about the focus on design, number two, and tech, number two, and the number three is, of course, the agility that I spoke to you about. To answer the question about how are we doing, planning to do it across the country, uh, it's a scale. Like, for example, Indian two-wheeler space has OEMs that sell two lakh vehicles a month with around 5,000 distributors. At the same time, there are OEMs that sell 8,000 vehicles with 180 distributors, both in the petrol vehicle right. space, both uh, large companies, international brands. So for any new entrant, the, the target to reach is, uh, to first reach the scale of uh, around 10,000 units, maybe presence in 10, 100 countries. So the, the point that I'm making is, it's possible to exist in, in various scales. So the first, milestone that anyone has to target, including a small company like River, has to target is to get to that 10,000 units, which is a very small fraction of the total market. Right. The moment you reach that, you build a business for yourself which is sustainable. Then you can scale up with multiple products and other things. Got it. So, you know, when you talk about your journey of last 21 months, or, you know, maybe it could be longer than any thought of, you know, building an AV company, how do you see that digital technologies have helped you to reach the scale that, that you are present at? Sure, so I think um, we as a startup, uh, as a company, we kind of combine the digital and the physical technologies and processes and product development quite well. Like uh, if you talk about the design iteration, right? So we do clay model, like which is a very traditional uh, old automotive, old school way of doing it. So we scan the clay and we have a digital model created and then we optimize on it. 
same thing happens with every part of the vehicle whether it is a frame the chassis the the battery pack the electronics everything so what we do is we do the concept design then we create the digital model we create the the physical prototype then we test it out extensively we do simulations and then we repeat the cycle so digital technologies are a major reason why the accelerated development is also possible so we have we have multiple softwares that we use including uh, the source system softwares which has kind of also helped uh, accelerate the process a lot now let's understand from by seeing the yeah. real products and yeah. Yeah. mr many talked about the design cycles uh, of indi specifically and you know so would like to understand you know in what all areas you have implemented in digital technologies not just on the design side and also what kind of cost you have been down in you know, implementing these technologies so um, it has an impact on both cost and time so if you look at the product development we'll let's say there is an industrial design setup then there is a Uh, basic engineering that we do then there is a detail engineering that we do then there is a design for manufacturing we do then there is a design for assembly so there are around 5 6 design cycles that come throughout the product development and in each of these phase there is a concept design there is digital design there is prototyping there is simulation there is physical testing so the digital technologies including simulation has kind of helped accelerate the entire timeline right. and time is money as you know that's number 1 second cost of prototyping a uh, vehicle is significant because uh, you are not uh, doing mass production methodologies you are using um, prototyping methodologies and the cost is significant so we still do a very good mix of digital and physical technologies but the digital technologies have helped us reduce the number of physical prototypes that you make which is again savings in cost right. and time right right So, if I, if you have to mention one technology or you know one specific example, what would be? So we, I mean, that's also um, why there are very strong strategic partnerships, right? See, one of them that we have is with the Dassault Systems. So we work uh, with their uh, SolidWorks. We also work with their uh, PLM Systems, and these are all really good softwares which are which are very established, and uh, and we are one of the premier startup packages. They they have. very very long term strategic partnerships with them so those have been extremely useful right one more question that i comes to my mind is you know since you as a startup you know have implemented all the right technologies in place to get things right done uh, but how does it impact your stakeholders the suppliers customers what does the impact out there so for customers it's absolutely the pro- the following the right product development methodology making sure that the quality of the product is amazing and right something i mean if you look at the product you will understand it's like we have not compromised on quality of the product at all for the stakeholders who are uh, uh, the suppliers they are all already using these technologies right so we kind of talk the same language as them and for a young company like uh, rike river it's extremely important that you talk the same language as a very established tier one who does a couple of billion dollars in turnover right. and then it becomes very easy to work with them and not many young companies have that skill set so building a company from scratch and you know it's largest 21 24 months of time period uh, attracting talent is one of the key challenge of the industry how do you do how are you doing it and is there any reluctance from the engineers or software developers to use these kind of tools or are they abreast with these kind of technologies no no um, there is absolutely no reluctance reluctance so we have the right mix of talent so uh, the all the engineers are are quite well versed with these tools we also offer them training programs and other things uh, attracting talent uh, is a challenge however what i have always felt uh, in the last few months is when we scaled up from we scaled up from zero two of us two founders to around 300 people today in a span of 20 22 months and uh, one thing i can be very sure about when i tell you this people did not join a firm for the money people actually join for the story because there was a time when river did not even have a proper website we were completely operating in stealth mode and whoever has joined us have joined for the story of building a product from scratch so now we have talked about the product product life cycles technology now i would like to understand about the manufacturing you know how are you planning to manufacture the indi and how do you want to scale the your manufacturing capabilities sure. so let's understand from you you know how you want to take it forward
So talking about your manufacturing, you know, you have set up a manufacturing facility near Bangalore. What is the capacity of it and you know, what are the kind of technologies you have implemented to build the whole the assembly line and everything? So the, the factory is uh, exactly around 40 minutes from here. It's in a place called Hoskote around uh, in the east side of Bangalore. So there is also a very fairly large two-wheeler ecosystem there with tyrone suppliers, etc., etc. And uh, we have a vehicle assembly line and a battery pack assembly line. So we are making our own battery packs. And uh, the, the inventories uh, of the parts come from our tyrone supply chain, which is all close by. And uh, the capacity of the facility is 100,000 scooters per annum uh, at a peak capacity in three ships. So is there any level of automation that you have planning to achieve or already doing it in some form? Can you give some insights so on that So today it's side? a semi-automated facility with a, with a lot of sub-assemblies that come from uh, our tire one suppliers that gets finally assembled in the facility. Uh, we do have plans for automation in the future, but today as we are starting the assembly process, it's a, it's a semi-automated uh, assembly. Okay, and if we talk about technology tools that you have implemented, any technology tools that you have implemented any manufacturing first? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in terms of uh, tracking the inventory, the accounting, all that, we have uh, various technology team tools including an ERP system implemented. Plus there is the factory process flow management software and all which are already in place. Got it, got it. Uh, one last question I want to understand about, uh, you know, we have talked everything from product to manufacturing now. Uh, if I talk, want to understand your business uh, side of things, how many more products we can see from River EV or you are just focusing on currently Indy right now till you expand the capacity to 9,000 9, as you mentioned? So today we are focusing on Indy. So this year from a business standpoint, we want to be in around uh, three to five cities, 2023, after we start selling from August 2023. Uh, next year, we plan to scale to around 50 cities and then 100 cities the year after. By the time we are present in 100 cities, we will come out of the second platform. There is already work happening on it. But uh, initially, the plan is, the focus is on Indy, and we want to use Indy to set up the brand driver. Okay. And if I talk about your focus segments, so would you like to be called as an electric tooler company, or you, are there any more segments in <laughs> pipeline? We are a utility lifestyle company. So uh, we are creating a segment of uh, utility lifestyle two-wheelers in the market. And uh, all the products that come out of the river portfolio will be on the same lines. Thank you so much for giving. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks a lot.